Okay, so this isn't going to be a normal travel vlog like we do a bunch of other times. Um, I wanted to talk about budget air travel. Uh, budget air travel, I think, gets a complete bad rap that it doesn't deserve. Now, we are flying to the United States today and we are doing it on a budget airline. The airline in general doesn't matter, though it does, you need to do your research. Not all budget airlines are created the same. Uh, the budget airline that we are flying today, we have flown a lot before and we know their service. But that's not what this video is about. This video isn't about this particular budget airline. It's about what to expect when flying a budget airline. So I think before we go down the rabbit hole of budget airlines, we should probably define what a budget airline is. In my definition, the most simple definition of a budget airlines is it's a no frills airlines. You are paying for everything. And as long as you know that going into it, you won't have any problems. So since uh, there's no food provided to you on this flight and the food on the flight is super expensive, um, we stop and we kind of stock up so that we're prepared and we're not overspending or starving. Okay, another key thing to remember is uh, budget airlines also charge for water. Um, not to mention you don't really want to drink the water on an airplane because you just never know where it's coming from. So make sure you bring a refillable water bottle and use the fountains to refill it. Uh, don't fill it before you go through security because you're going to have to dump it out and you're going to slow down the line. Fill it when you get to your gate. Um, so this is completely unrelated to budget airlines in any way. Um, Shana's stuck back at security. Uh, Shana likes to knit on flights, so she's got these knitting needles that have a string between them. It's so you can knit something in a circle. Uh, well, when it went through the scanner, uh, they thought it might be explosives. So they shut down her security line, and then they called the police. So she's waiting for the police to show up to check through her bags. The bomb-sniffing dog is there. Um, on the plus side, uh, security here at Schiphol Airport, very polite, very nice, very informative. Um, TSA, you should take some notes. Okay, so you're done reading all of the rules and all the restrictions. You know exactly what you need and what you don't get with each flight. The airline we're flying today offers four different price fares. We're flying basic, which means all we can take is a carry-on bag or personal item, like a backpack. Um, they also charge for seat assignments, they charge for food, they charge for water, they charge for any additional bags. And this is why it's important to know what you get before you pay for your flight. I think most budget airlines get a bad rap because people just don't take the time to actually read what's included in the flights. And if you read it and understand it, you know exactly what to prepare for, which is why we bought food and bring it on with us. We fill our water bottles before we get on because we know exactly what to expect. So we're gonna go board now. Uh, one downside of budget airline is uh, no uh, plankway, gateway, walkway, uh, boarding tunnel. Gainway, uh, you you board outside, which is not normally a problem, but uh, today it's raining and we are not at the front of the line. So, uh, jet bridge, jet bridge. Jet bridge, that's, what it's, that's what it's called. So, uh, we're gonna continue boarding. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the camera down because it's getting rained on. <laughs> So just like there's no jet bridge when we get on the plane, there's none when we get off either. Um, so we got to take a bus to the terminal. And that's what we're doing now. Um, layovers is another reason that some of the budget airfares are so inexpensive. Uh, again, with WOW Airlines, which we're flying today, you always lay over in Iceland. Nobody really likes to take a lot of layovers, so the flights tend to be cheaper because they're little smaller legs that an airline can use to fill up small flights instead of a big transatlantic flight.
to that. Okay, so you might assume that since it's a budget airline, they try to pack as many people as they can onto uh, a plane, and that you're like stuck with like absolutely no leg room. That's not exactly 100% the case. You can see here. So be prepared. Okay, so you might ask, with all the negativity that seems to always be floating around about budget airlines, why would you purposely take one? Well, for this particular trip that we're flying a budget airline, well, we had about five days notice to book a flight from Amsterdam to the Washington DC area. We looked at a main carrier and it was like 1,250 euros to, to make that flight. Well, we go to the budget airlines and it's 222 euros to make that round trip flight. So 1,000 euros is a significant amount of money and a significant amount of reasons to consider flying a budget airline. So that's why we booked the budget airline this time. It allowed both of us to travel instead of what we thought was only going to be one of us having the ability to travel back. Okay, so the word budget is not always something you want to hear in conjunction with airlines. It kind of makes you think, do they cut corners on safety and everything? And that's far from the case. Uh, WOW Airlines, who we're flying today, um, actually has one of the newest fleets of uh, aircraft um, in the whole industry. So just because it's budget doesn't mean that it's not a safe airline or anything like that. So just throw that out the window and don't even think about it anymore. Okay, so also with budget airlines, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not friendly or that they've got poor customer service. We've actually found just the opposite. On most of the budget airlines that we have flown, the staff has been amazingly nice and accommodating and extremely helpful. So again, just because it's budget doesn't mean that you're not gonna get good customer service. Okay, so if customer service is good and the planes are new, where's the budget come in and how did the planes, the flights get so inexpensive? Well. That's the in-flight amenities. You are going to get absolutely no in-flight entertainment. You know, on this particular airline, they actually sell you or rent you an iPad so that you can watch movies. They also sell you all of the drinks. This is where they make up the money that other airlines just bake into the cost. So no frills flying. Most of the airplanes that we fly on, like intercoastal, uh, they're, they're very limited interior. Seats don't always recline. They're very simplistic. The transatlantic flights, the planes are just fine. They've got good, comfortable seats with plenty of leg room and everything. Well, plenty of leg room if you're 5'5". Five, five. So they make up their money on the ticket price by everything that they sell you or rent you. So keep that in mind. We go ahead and download a bunch of movies onto Netflix and everything like that. So we bring our own entertainment with us. Something you should consider if you're flying a budget airline. Hello. Hello. Go ahead and scan. Oh, don't break it. <laughs> I drop his phone so many times. Have a great flight. Thanks a lot. You're Have a great welcome. weekend. Yep. 
So I think that just about covers everything you need to know about budget airline flights. Um, if it doesn't, I'll fill it in now. <laughs>